What are your thoughts on the environmental crisis? This is, in fact, the great issue of our time. Uh, and in a sense, we're very fortunate. Uh, I know it doesn't sound like it when we hear all of the horrible facts about what is happening to the planet. And I say we are fortunate because it's a moment in time when, in history, in the history of mankind, in the history of this planet, when we are called upon to act in a way uh, that will transcend ourselves. If we don't, we will no longer exist. And that's become, becoming more and more clear. So this is a fantastic opportunity to awaken collectively. Until now, for 2,500 years, these Buddhist teachings have been focused on individual awakening. Whether it's in the different, the various schools in Buddhism approach awakening differently. Awakening, what I mean, my experience and my understanding of awakening is to experience the oneness of life. And in oneness, we're talking about interconnection, interdependence, impermanence. Um, basically, that we are all one, we're all connected, nothing can exist on its own, isolated. And if one perishes, the other is altered by that. I'm not just talking about human beings, I'm talking about every, every aspect of life on this planet. Until now, these teachings have focused on individual enlightenment, and then in some, for example in the Zen, in the Mahayana uh, tradition, focusing on the Bodhisattva, who is someone who has awakened, seen their true nature, seen them, and because they see their true nature, they see the true nature of others, and want to help the others awaken as well. But it's always about individual awakening. Now we are confronted with an absolute emergency when what is called for is a collective awakening. And I will explain why. I've been deeply touched by the thinking and the work of, of a Zen teacher and thinker David Loy, who's written a book called Echo Dharma. And he points out um, this notion of collective awakening. Now, we, when we talk about awakening and not being awake for an individual, we see that when we aren't awake and we don't see our true nature and we don't see the interconnection, we are motivated by greed, by anger, and by ignorance. This ignorance being the basic delusion of separation, living in duality rather than non-duality. And that will then influence how we relate to others, how we relate to ourselves, and how we relate to others. We think of ourselves as being alone, separate, and we want to protect ourselves, and therefore we take from others we hurt others, we reject, or we try to possess others and things. This applies to the earth as well, nature. So we will try to, uh, we see nature, and we call nature, which is just other aspects of our own being, if we see the oneness of our being. But when we don't, we think of the plants, the animals, the earth, the resources, the water, the air, as something that is there for us to use, to exploit. We think of it in terms, we don't even, we're not thinking about it, but we're acting in terms of greed, or ignorance, or anger with violence. And we don't appreciate the sacredness of all things. Collectively, as a, self, as a culture, we have institutionalized greed, anger, and ignorance with our political system, our economic system, and our industrial complex that generates war and violence. 
That's why the awakening is necessary. We need to awaken so that we can no longer act from greed, anger, and ignorance, but from generosity, compassion or love, and wisdom. Because wisdom is just seeing the oneness. And then compassion is the action that arises from seeing that oneness. So if I see that the animal, that the, the cow and I, or the chicken and I, or the fish and I, are one, I would not want to inflict suffering. I would not want to exploit. I might even have a hard time eating the cow or the chicken or the fish. Now, of course, the human species needs protein, needs, needs to eat to sustain itself, certain foods. and uh, So it, what I'm saying is we don't need to be vegetarians. That's not the point. The point is how we experience the world. And we see that we are just a part, a manifestation of the nature that everything else is a manifestation of. We are part of the biosphere. It's not the biosphere and us. And until we awaken to that as a whole, as a collective, we're going to be in big trouble. At the same time, we could just resign ourselves to saying, well, then we won't do anything because that's not possible. How could we possibly all awaken? Well, you know, interesting things happen, and we're already seeing it happening. We're seeing hundreds of movements, thousands of movements around the world, unrelated, who are all people motivated by the same concern. A cause for great optimism is young people. And they, the young people, tend to think of it as more, it's their future that they're worried about. But in fact, all of us who are alive today probably would not see the perishing of the earth. Anything we do now, we would be doing for people we never will see we never will know. So we're not doing it for ourselves. At the same time, we are doing it for ourselves because we are all one. So it's not just about having my... Um, I want to have my hybrid car or I'm going to recycle my garbage. Those are good things to do. Absolutely. They're, they're not harmful. What it, what's involved, however, is needs to be a collective shift. And it has to involve a non-attachment to me. Because otherwise, as long as we stay attached to ourselves, we will never let go of uh, our possessions, our way of behaving, um, our cars, uh, the way that we waste water and food. And most of us in the Western world are so far removed from what is already happening. It's people in the third world who are already suffering from the consequences of the collective behavior and exploitation of the earth rather than appreciating. Gratitude's a wonderful thing in this sense. Um, because if we are grateful, if we truly see things as they are, we are grateful. We're grateful for the presence of the fish. We're grateful for this river that is running by. Um, we don't need to have anything other than what we have. <laughs>